In this video, I am going to work on the roof rack. The idea of the roof rack is a head there of the camper, a place to put my Max Tracks, spade mount, and a place to put firewood. Where else would I put firewood? So that's that taken care of. I'll also be, well, actually starting work on the camper itself. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. The first stage of the roof rack build is done, with the low-profile light bars fitted. Next comes the mount for my favorite shovel. On the troop carrier, I used a, a mount made by a company called Yakima. I had my doubts because they're all plastic. This is for the shovel. I must say I was skeptical and I'm fitting them again because they did the job really, really well. And even though they're plastic, it held up. So, you mount them like that. So the spade fits like that on the rack. Yep. Oh, this spade's got a history. I must one day tell you the history of the spade. It's very old and I disuse it. I'm not going to be able to complete the rack now. The two antennas will go there and there and they require some plates that they're making here and I'm going to send them off and have them powder coated so they, uh, they look good. Uh, that'll take a couple of days. You might be wondering what was my reaction when I saw the camper first fitted M mixed to be quite honest it's big and because at the moment there's no color carry through it actually looks bigger than it really is it kind of is like this great big tick riding on the back of an antelope it, it's two separate things now when I when I do the wrap a part of the camp will be wrapped it will actually in effect make the camper look smaller at the moment the proportions are all wrong visually the other question i have about it is its height access here that's quite high that's quite a high to, to lift and carry things over here isn't going to be difficult but i wonder for gwyn who's that high is it going to work for her it's not higher than I thought it would be, but I still question the ease of accessibility for her. Access in and out with the way they've built the ladder. I don't see the slightest problem with there at all. But apart from that, I'm naturally a cautious person. So I'm not going to jump up and down and say, wow, isn't it wonderful when I'm not quite there yet. And I think I will actually only reach that point when I'm on an actual trip. The camper comes with a very, very sturdy set of steps. These are supplied so I can establish the perfect height, which in this case is that. So what I must now do is drill a hole in there, drill a hole in there, and Rob suggested I use these pins. Actually gonna suggest it's to uh, Tommy campers they supply them because these are a perfect solution if I want to extend or shorten the legs to pack them away or anything. There you go. I'm down. That's now the right height. And if I want to overhead scrub bushes and stuff like that, I can then do that. And There are two antennas on the roof rack. I've had these plates made. So that one goes underneath there. And that goes on like that. And that goes on like that. Now what this is, is an interesting Australian product called that. And the point of that is that I can, when not using the antenna, Instead of removing them, clip them and actually fold them in. So I'll have one both sides. So I, if I'm using this one, I just grab it, pull the pin. That's the pin there. And 
uh, put the aerial up. So I don't need to take aerials off and on all the time. The fold-down antenna bracket is a really great idea. It's made well, good solid materials, but in my opinion, badly designed. The cable underneath does not freely enter the antenna. You actually need to put a spacer between the bracket and the antenna to make an antenna fit. The pin gets stuck. One of the most discouraging parts of the four-wheel drive equipment industry is the tendency of companies to copy others. The moment a really good idea is launched, within three months, it's been copied. Mostly, or in fact, almost always, badly. While I really don't want to encourage anybody to copy this design, I'd like the makers to re-look at it. A great idea, not well executed. To mount the Max Trax, I'm going to try Max Trax's own locating pins. I'm not sure if they're going to work terribly well on a roof rack environment. How easy is it going to be to take them off and then put them back again? When I cannot lean over them, I have to do it from one side only. If it takes two people to take a max track off, well then, forget it. But I can only know if this is going to work once they're mounted, so I'm going to give it a try. Where are you? Hold on, me. Now that does look good. It's going to have the effect of breaking the lines between the roof and the camper. Not only is it practical, but it looks good too. So I have some misgivings. Uh, when it comes to the way these Max Tracks are mounted. And I look at it here and I can imagine myself struggling to get them off and then struggling even more to get them back on. What's wrong with a plain old ratchet strap? Hello, this is now another camera test to see. This is now a um, Lavalion microphone uh, made by Boyer, they're cheap and cheerful and I've got it mounted uh, just underneath the GPS so you can see the GPU you might be able to see the GPS right there and there's the microphone right there and uh, I'm now testing that microphone so now let's close my garage this weekend I'll be shooting videos uh, bits and pieces of the things I'm doing because it's quite an intensive weekend um, Work is continuing on the camper. We hit a little snag. You know, the trouble is with custom work, snags just come up. They, they, you know, it's it's to do with the fridge. The fridge works, it's not there, but everything's working. Ah, but, okay, <laughs> so we have to sort that out. And it's the nature of custom work. So we are going to be um, sorting that out this weekend. I've got a whole lot of stuff that I bought for the camper. For the fir for example, for the first time ever, I'm going to be using AC, 220 volts AC, to do some of my cooking. So on this first trip that Gwyn and I are about to take, we won't be using it as our primary cooker. In other words, I'm not gonna buy an induction cooker at this moment, but I am going to take a toaster, for example toaster well camp why not why not uh, kettle can I really not use my favorite little water boiler and instead use a this will boil water Chinese cheap kettle there you go yep. what did I tell you there you go boiling well I can and I'm going to because well I've never done it before and that's the whole point of this exercise with the camper. It's a whole lot of new stuff that I've not done before. And so that's what I'm going to do this weekend. So if you follow me along on this video, if you want to see what my weekend's like, it's going to be a fun one. 
the closer I get to completing the build, the closer I get to taking it on a run. And in the meantime, I've been buying goodies. Now, next week we're working on the camper, doing the electrics, and I'm going to do a series of box openings here of product. Some is really nice, some is quite boring, but let's have a go. Now, this should be the uh, all of the kit for installing the red vision. That there is the bracketry install and stuff for the red vision control. So that's really that's that's exciting. I've never had one of these before, and I, you know, to be quite really honest with you, I'm not that kind of guy that that likes all of the electronics. But hey, you know, why not? I don't have to buy it. Maybe I'll love it. I mean, you know. So we're going to we're going to be doing a a pretty cool electrical system, far more elaborate than I've ever done before in any of the builds that I've ever done. You know, it's a it's a different thing. For example, I'm going to be doing some of my cooking using AC current instead of gas. How much? Well, early on, I'll, I'll get to that now. Um, but yeah, it's something I've never done. Hey, let's do it. So this is ob very obviously okay. That's the the Red Vision control module. I suppose you'd call it with that. That that that's oh, that that is. You know, that's pretty exciting actually. That that's pretty exciting. So in the vehicle, I've used the. Uh, the Egon DC hub, but I'm not going to use a, the DC hub in the in the in the camper. I'm going to use this instead. It does the same job, but it does it electronically, and you can control it electronically. So again, I, I've never done that before. You know, I'm a fairly I, I, I don't call myself a technological dunce. I'm not a technological dunce. I understand computers. I understand hard drives. I understand, you know, I, I'm, I'm familiar with these things. They are not strange to me. But at the same time, when I'm out in the bush, I'm more analog than digital. Okay, so that's actually the... Well, that's now the power supply, obviously. That would be the power supply charging system. It's quite big. I'm going to learn everything. Now, I'm going to get Heiner to help me install this. I think this is probably a little bit beyond my capabilities. Uh, so I thought, you know, let's get somebody who definitely, I mean, he's done hundreds of them. So that's, that's actually pretty exciting. I, I am actually excited about about that. <clears throat> Gun and I were strolling around the, the kitchen store the other day and we saw these rather nice ki kitchen implements and we asked ourselves a question and the question was why do we only have r our really old kitchen stuff, throwaway kitchen stuff in our, in our camping gear? Why is it always the also ran equipment? You know the, the frying pans that have been used uh, 10,000 times and now has absolutely no non-stick properties at all. If you think about it, if you're camping, that's where you really want non-stick <laughs> because you want it easy to clean. So we bought ourselves those. They're quite cool. I think they're quite nice. Yeah, that'll be fun. Play with those. This guy here. Now, <clears throat> I have never ever had a toaster with me before camping and I thought to myself why on earth not I love morning scramble eggs but scramble eggs with a nice properly made piece of toast and you know the thing is with scrambled eggs as you you, you scramble them they, 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 the moment you get the slightest inkling that they're starting to dry they come off the flame immediately and that is when you want to hear clink of the toaster popping. So, there you go. Toaster. Those of you who think that I'm going soft, yep. 
You're not wrong. Guess what? I'm allowed to. I'm qualified. I've slept in the open. I've cooked with nothing but a piece of wire over a flame. I've done it. I don't want to do that anymore. Oh, this is, oh, this is without doubt the most boring item. A whole $7.50. So I thought, okay, well, if I've got this much current, then, well, and I've got a toaster, should I, every time I want to boil water, get my lovely little reactor? Oh, you know what? You know what we didn't think of? The uh, MSR actually makes the water slightly hotter than this, these two as well. Huh? <clears throat> For reasons. My favorite pieces of kit. My absolute favorite piece of kit. I love that thing. I might hate it. I might just boil it the gas again. I don't know. Oh, okay, this is interesting. Nightcore NPS 200. They make a 400 or they make a 600. And this has a small inverter in it. It has a small lithium battery in it. It weighs a little under four kilos. And I can charge it in my car. Um, I have to work out if I need any adapters to work to charge it in the car, but it will deliver uh, AC 220 volts and 12 volts and USB and USB-C. So it's a portable power pack. I could continue using the solar pod in my system, uh, but it's overkill. I don't need that. The whole perp the whole idea behind this is to have a power pack that is completely portable. For example, if I was doing night photography over some of my night stuff, it takes several hours to run, and I might run cables to power the uh, the cameras. Uh, I can I can do that. a small portable unit. And I sorry about that. I had to. I couldn't use the rest of the material. The sound, well, I was testing this. It's a mi new microphone. It's a wireless microphone made by Rode. And uh, what was happening is it was inside my shirt. And so that was happening. And so I'm, I'm learning. And I didn't want to reshoot it because it was supposed to be spontaneous. If it can't be genuinely spontaneous, then I'm not going to contrive it. So, um, okay, to wrap up. This week, I mentioned before, we're hard, hard work on the campus, I'll be filming that, and I do have some really interesting news. We have bought a property. Uh, we, we sold our house in South Africa in 2013. Since then, we've been renting, and thanks to you, thanks to the Patreons, and thanks to my Be A Filmmaker students all over the world that learn filmmaking by doing my online courses, thanks to all of you, we are in a position now where we can purchase a new property in, in our hometown of Perth. We are north of Perth. And we are made an offer, it was accepted, and we are now waiting for the bank to say, yes, we'll loan you the rest of the money. And the most exciting part about the new property is that it actually has on it already a studio. Well, it's not quite a studio. It's large, it's big, but it'll be a studio. Well, it'll be a workshop. Well, it'll be, a, it'll be a studio workshop. It'll be half studio photograph, photograph and video and half four-wheel drive workshop building and thing, but it's big and we're very excited. Thank you for watching. See you next week.